Today we welcome uh, Fang Shen from uh, Harman Engineering University who's uh, been working with us for some time on using multi-sensor uh, integration on, um, on vehicles. So positioning vehicles using um, GPS but other things as well. It's something we've been working on for quite some time, Cooperative Intelligent Transport Systems. And uh, the work he's been doing has, um, uh, has processed some data which we did in quite a big experiment down in Melbourne. I'm sure he's going to tell you all about it. So, thanks. Okay, thanks, Andrew. Um, first of all, um, in the past year, I visited ESSER and of course on the cooperative positioning in the uh, Edge of Broken Networks. Now, I will present my work in the past year. The title is Cooperative Positioning Method for Relative Positioning in the Curl Ad Hoc Networks. The outline is as follows. Firstly, we will introduce the cooperative positioning technique and then give two solutions use different sensors. One is your DSRC, another is UWB. Finally, we will give the conclusion and some advice about this work. Relative position awareness is a key factor for many applications, such as intelligent transportation systems and location-based services. One way to obtain position, GNS is widely used in intelligent transport transportation systems. But unfortunately, current commercially available GNSS receivers cannot satisfy, uh, satisfy some safety critical applications, such as collusion advice and uh, land level guidance. Recently, advances in wireless networks have encouraged the development of cooperative positioning in vehicular ad hoc networks. The typical structure of CP in vehicle networks is shown here. In this finger, the node is uh, represent the vehicles. Each vehicle equipment, equipment different sensors to get their own position, such as digital mapper, GNSS receiver. <coughs> the idea of the cooperative positioning is sharing position related data among the nodes through internal node communication and uh, fusing the data for the positioning or positioning enhancement. Therefore, through communicating measurements among the vehicles, CP technical can improve the performance of the position. So far, several CP technicals have been considered for improving the positioning in vehicle networks. Some typical CP technicals, uh, we call traditional CP, such as DGPS, IDK, and uh, satellites, all ground-based augmentation systems. However, those technicals rely on infrastructure and uh, cannot perform well in urban environments due to limited view of the sky, mud paths, and uh, non-line of sight from nearby buildings. Recently, some modern CP technicals based on range or range rate in violence were extended to vehicle-to-vehicle -to -vehicle communication and are proposed to overcome those um, questions, which improve the positioning performance uh, through fusing the range and uh, other measurement. In the past year, we mainly focused on the modern CP technical, which researched on the DSRC and the UWB to realize uh, cooperative positioning respectively. First, we will show the proposed CP-based DSRC. 
In the proposed type CP method, we assume many vehicles in the vehicle networks. Assume that all the vehicles are equipped with a GPS receiver, a IMU, and a DSRC transceiver to communicate their data. Each vehicle in the network will communicate its local GPS and IMU observations to other vehicles and uh, we also receive those state from neighboring vehicles. Each vehicle faces the GPS measurement and the IMU data, and the internal range rate based on the Doppler shift of the carrier of DSRC signals. Then, the vehicle will use the local and uh, receive the data to estimate its positioning relative to its neighbors. Therefore, in our proposed type CP, GPS measurements and IMU data and the Doppler shift of the color of this DSRC signal are used in, in the method. We will first show the GPS observations. In our proposed method, we use the double difference pseudo range and the Doppler shifts because several sources contribute to the error in the signal range measurement, such as satellite bias and errors in the broadcast environments. Therefore, we use the double difference method to eliminate these errors. The double difference signal range and uh, top shift can be obtained from this, uh, those two equations. And when you uh, UI and UJ uh, are the unit vector point from receive to the satellites. And then R is uh, the distance vector between two vehicles. And this V is the relative velocity between two vehicles. The second observation used is acceleration. The accelerations of vehicles which are obtained from the IMU are shared between vehicles and the fields with other measurements. The relative accelerations can be calculated as this question. Well, A is measured by IMU accelerometers. CBN is the rotation matrix. This let is defined based on the OLAR angles to align the body frame to the navigation flag. The third measurement used in the type CP is a top shift based on DSRC signal. Also, DSRC uh, is used to provide communications between vehicles. We mainly use the range rate uh, which um, obtained from the color of the DSRC. The range rate can be estimated based on the carrier frequency offset of the DSRC signal. Um, this work is done by uh, Nima. Yeah. And uh, the PTF of the noise of the CF measurement is approximately zero mean asymmetric um, uh, Gaussian with right STD with about 120 Hz and 100 Hz respectively. Then the Doppler shift from DSRC can be obtained where well, uh, WL is the Doppler shift received by the touched vehicle from neighbor vehicle and uh, R is the distance between uh, two vehicles. The, this finger gives a proposed solution use GPS, INS, and the DSRC. The finger, there are three types of the measurement. One is GPS signal range, mm -hmm. GPS uh, Doppler shift, and acceleration, acceleration from IMU are uh, shared between two vehicles uh, by DS, DSRC. Then the local local uh, GPS signal range and the GPS top shift are top difference with the received GPS uh, 
um, civil range and uh, top glaciers. And the uh, top difference, uh, uh, sea range and the top shift and uh, uh, relative acceleration and uh, top shift from TSRC, TSRC uh, fields, uh, input the dead fusion algorithm. Uh, for the dead, uh, dead fuel fusion, for the dead fusion, we use the extended Kármán filter as the core of the type CP algorithm. First, uh, we give the general uh, performance analysis. As we know, uh, the posterior estimate and convergence of the common filter is usually used to invest, investigate the effect of the filter algorithm, which is also used to verify the performance of the flow cost um, type CP. Um, because the performance depends on the number and the location of visible GPS satellites. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we use the GPS observations collected from the low mount attended at the uh, UNSW in the, our laboratory. Well, 10 and 12 GPS satellites were always visible. Uh, the duration of the experimental data was much more than 24 hours. Also, we define a new um, parameters for the performance analysis, which is better. Yeah. In the equation, P is the uh, posterior estimate convergence of the common filter. And uh, N, actually, N, N is the number of post four satellites combination. For example, when 10 satellites are visible, we Average the result of 252 possible combinations of five satellites out of ten. Then give the uh, general perform performance. The up finger shows the beta over 24 hours for type CP with IS and uh, the flow host uh, CP use DSRC. Um, the low table. Uh, gives the improvement. Well, M in the table and in the finger M is the number of common visible satellites. As expected, the performance of the relative positioning improves when the number of the visible satellites is high. Yeah. It is ob obvious that the proposed method outperforms the type CP with IS because we add the DSRC. To fill the uh, evaluate the type CP method, we uh, use the experiment that from the cooperative experiment in Nottingham University. The experiment Setup include two vehicles equipped with GPS receiver, INS, and the DSRC transceivers. Expensive re uh, reference equip equipment and a set of low cost sensors were fitted into each test vehicle. This finger uh, shows the number of common uh, visible satellites of the experiment that it can be seen that the number of common visible satellites is almost always above the requirement. Then give, uh, we give the result. This table um, gives the performance indicators for the experimental result for entire experimental depth. It can be shown, uh, seen that the type CP with double this Doppler from TSRC, uh, the, the type CP with DOP and IMU outperforms uh, all other methods. Other methods uh, combine TCP method uh, with IS, TCP, and the DGPS. 
to fill the uh, evaluate the performance of the flow cost method with different number of visible GPS satellites. We man uh, manually market the GPS data with different uh, visible satellites to emulate obstruction to low elevation satellites. The maximum maximum number of common visible satellites M atops seven, six, and five respectively. The up table gives the relative position errors with different maximum number of visible GPS satellites. The low table gives the improvement. As can be seen, the proposed method outperforms the type CP with RS. As the number of the common visible satellites decreases, a high factor of improvement can be achieved. To uh, evaluate the performance of the met, uh, to evaluate the performance of the method in the GPS outage, uh, the GPS state of the four se uh, selected time segment were marketed from the entire experiment data. The GPS measurement of all satellites are made unavailable. The duration of the GPS outage is between uh, 1 second to 20 seconds to emulate the uh, more general urban environment. Then we give the result. The left uh, finger shows the uh, IMSE for different technicals as a function of, function of satellite outage duration. The right finger shows the uh, improvement achieved. On these two fingers, we can see the type CP you with DSRC and IMU have the best performance. At the uh, 20 seconds, compared to the type CP with, um, with compared to type CP with IS, the achieve, uh, improvement can achieve uh, 14 percent. Recently, um, UWB range method has attracted a great deal of interest as, as use uh, extremely large bandwidth enable accurate range estimates and uh, high reliability. UWB have many advantages, including uh, signal robustness to interference, high communications capacity, and resistance to multiple and uh, fine time resolution. Therefore, we uh, research the typed cup CP method by using the UWB uh, instead of the DSRC. First, we did the cooperative experiment with the Marvin University. Uh, in the experiment, four UWB uh, transmissions were equipped on the two uh, mobile Nodes and the two static nodes. The dynamic experiment rules was selected in every park, every park in Morgan City. And the up, the up finger shows an uh, error of measured measure against to the actual, actual distance. This uh, up finger shows the error. Made by UWB. The low finger shows the variance of the measurement associated with the various distance. It can be seen that the error and the variance of the measurement does not increase with the distance. Does not. And this finger shows the PDF of the range error. It can be seen that the PDF of the range error is almost Gaussian distribution. To implement the ECAF in the proposed tight CP algorithm, we assumed the PDF of range error is Gaussian 
distribution with zero mean and the variance of 0 0.3 that we can plot this PDF. Then use the character of the UWB measurement. We can model the UWB measurement, which can use it in other experiment. Therefore, we assumed that the UWB was also equipped in the cooperative position experiment in Nottingham University, as uh, described before. The performance of this different type CP method with different sensors is compared use the same experiment data. This table gives the performance for the experimental result of different methods in GPS coverage environment. As shown in the table, the type CP with IS and the UWP outperforms all the other methods. We also mark it out the GPS data as described it before. Uh, this finger shows the error of, as a function of the GPS outage duration. Uh, this is the uh, error. This is under the GPS complete out outage environment. As can be seen, the error increase along with uh, duration of uh, along with the GPS outage duration. And the proposed type CP with IS and the UWB outperforms the other four methods significantly. Then we can get two conclusions. One, using the DSRC and the UWB can efficiently improve the performance of relative position especially in GPS outage environment. Two, uh, comparing to the DSRC, UWB have more contribution in tight integration cooperative position. It also should be noted there is a still a gap between the av available result and the practical application. There are some field work can be done. First, other sensors such as radar, di digital maps, Output and the camera can also be different field work. The second is the technical of the buses against the mount bus and the obstructions in urban environment. Finally, there is a necessity for a field study to improve the accuracy of the bit field range. Thanks. Okay, questions? Last picture with the results on <clears throat> So the other way of thinking about this problem is how, like, you know, when you've got an outage, it's how long you can maintain a certain level of accuracy. So if you're saying how long can you go and keep the error under five meters, then the pink one can go for ten or more seconds. So when you're, when you're measuring your um, <coughs> percentage improvement, you've only ever really looked at error. But the, um, the length of time that it survives at a certain error level is also useful to know. So it might be you know, just presenting the same results in a different way. It is, it is the same results. Yes, yeah, there's no new numbers, it's just... It's just out. changing the scenario, changing the test setup. Well, maybe plotting... So if you could plot, um, just change the metric that you use to evaluate how good it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Change. It doesn't change the fact that this one's better than that one. It's just by saying, because you know, if you're, because um, quite often what'll come, what the way this will work, I expect is they're going to give an accuracy um, requirement, right? In yeah. order to do the CITS stuff, we want this level of accuracy in order to give road safety these road safety functions, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have this arrangement, you can say, well, okay, um, if there's a GPS blockage, then we can still provide the requirement for 15 seconds or whatever, right? That's that's the sort of way that a 
a lot of people will be thinking about the problem rather than how accurate is this integration method against that one. It's this one lasts five seconds longer, so it's not more useful. It's a bit like holdover for positioning. Yeah. Could you explain a bit about this, how, how you are calculating the beta? Beta? Sorry? The improvement. The improvement? The percentage no, the of error. The error of something. The, the scope variance. The you beta. Show the uh, error? How? How, how you are calculating the beta? You have shown the equation, right? A inverse. Go back, go back. Yeah, go back. Just, just a slide. Stop in the this Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, this one, this equation. So, I mean, you, uh, what is beta? What is beta? Yes. Yeah, beta uh, is calculated from the uh, posterior estimate covariance of common field. Uh, this square root of co covariance will give you the standard deviation, and it's summing up all the standard and then, and what's, N is what's number What's big N? What's big N is the number of vehicles. Yeah, no, the number of epochs, the number of time, okay. the number of cycles. So, okay, it's so a, it's square root average, of summation of the An average of the standard deviations. Okay, okay, yes. And In 3D. another thing, it's not so technical, but I was thinking of, I, I don't know much about DSRC here, you, uh, but, I could understand that DSRC is a kind of position and other data sharing with other vehicles. And don't you think this is, if we want, if we want to implement it practically, there is some privacy issues? Uh, DSRC is basically Wi-Fi for cars, right? Mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> the only reason that we're getting these measurements out of it for positioning is because we ask them to do it for us. I mean, they're becoming available publicly, but they weren't before. Like, Coda Wireless just did it for us. Um, so what would happen is those measurements from the DSRC only to do with Doppler and stuff, and they would probably appear on campus. So we'd be able to pull that data off the, from the vehicle's, you know, bus. I don't think, I'm not sure what your privacy, what sort of privacy, you worry about the data that's being carried on DSRC. Yes. Yeah, no, so the DSRC can provide, um, just provide some of these raw measurements into this system without, it's like metadata, mm -hmm. you know, it was delivered at such and such a Doppler, so that, who, who cares what the data was, all we care about is the Doppler. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think privacy will come into it. I think he's trying to say that it's everyone's broadcasting their positions, so then you can track which car from when, from where to where. And that oh yeah, so that is that what you're saying? They'll just know that you're speaking. That's a different layer of problem. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the car. Yeah. researched in other communities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and well, I guess there's different levels of that as well. <clears throat> there's the, the, the measurements I was talking about were just internal to the mm -hmm. car, but you could send your pseudo ranges out, which doesn't actually say where you are, but you can work it out. You know, is that a privacy breach? Um, <laughs> Only if you're busted for speeding. <laughs> and whether, whether the vehicles are identified in such a way that you know whose vehicle it was. Well, I guess if you've got internet metadata, you can find out. The uh, standard requires vehicles to broadcast their position 10 times per second for safety reasons, even if regardless. Uh, Irrespective of all this, which, so, which standard? Um, the, um, I think we one six oh nine. The SSC basically. Yeah. Um, so for collision so, avoidance uh, applications. So that's just raw GPS. Sorry. This is the raw GPS position. Uh, position. Uh, safety no. critical messages. Uh, yeah, but the position gets transmitted. Is just the GPS position. There's no other. Uh, as far as I can tell. 
think it's. I have a quick question, actually. Sure. So, in the uh, uh, the SRC part, uh, the information that you get from neighboring vehicles is only the position. Is that right? Uh, or do they transmit their speed as well? And uh, would that be helpful to you? Because if a neighboring vehicle transmits its speed and you measure your own Doppler, then you could. Um, estimates like the angle at which they're moving to each other, for example, they, you, you would be able to tell if it's driving directly to you on the same lane or on a different lane uh, by comparing the Doppler with the speed uh, transmitted by the other vehicle. So I'm just wondering if that's something that you use in the algorithm. So what are your, what are your three variables there coming out of the SRC? W, rho, T2, and A, what are they? Rho is range, isn't it? Yeah, the exchange uh, information is uh, zero range, and Doppler shift along GPS, and the acceleration, and this is a uh, Doppler shift along DSRC. Excellent. Where does the acceleration come from? The IMU. IMU. Why is it coming out of DSRC? Um, that's out of the communication channel. Yeah, so you, you share. Right, so that's, that's the information that's being shared. Mm. Yeah, this is the shared information. And this W is, is the measurement. Right. So, so we don't share the position, not the GPS position directly. So this is uh, what we call tightly coupled um, in cooperative positioning. Whereas um, I think you're referring to one of those loosely coupled ones where... So why is acceleration actually important rather than the speed? Suppose the vehicle is going at a fixed speed, uh, so acceleration is zero, but it still matters to you if it's... That, that's what comes out of the sensor. Yeah. But the acceleration is what comes off from the accelerometer, just uh -huh. like your phones. When you start walking, you have acceleration. So that's just the raw data. This is looking at as raw data as possible, which is why we don't share position. We share the stuff that makes it. I mean, it's not following the standard you're talking about, but the thing is, the um, in order to position all the vehicles in a network, um, that problem is not solved yet. To do it well enough to do the safety critical applications, um, and so we're just investigating all different ways of doing it. What what will probably ultimately happen is the standard will change to reflect what actually needs to be shared in order to be able to solve the positioning position the problem to give that half meter or whatever to give you all the applications. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a difficult thing because you know people look at I mean, are you from um, are you from Sivage or um, computer science but I work with Travis. Uh, Travis, right, yeah. So people and then there's also a guy in aviation. Uh, a guy called Mike, uh, Mike, um, who, who instruments cars and stuff. But um, the problem with the a lot of this CITS stuff is that people assume that the positioning problem is solved because yeah. they think GPS can give you centimeters yeah. using um, RTK, right? Solve the problem. Let's move on. But RTK, like you went out there, RTK won't work. The buildings would block it off, the multipath is too bad, um, you know, the trees would attenuate the signals. And in most urban environments, you can't get sub-meter, let alone centimeters. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is a problem we're trying to solve, and it's, it's, not, it's not a solved problem. It's, you know, it's great because it creates lots of research, but it doesn't solve the problem. So. <coughs> so one of the things from our perspective that we're trying to push into the standard in the same sense that you're saying, uh, is that the standard now just talks about transmitting position, and we're arguing for uh, that, that speed information just from your you know, yeah, speed yeah. Uh, 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 from you know the way that your uh, your car measures its own speed if you've got uh, would be very useful for purposes such as even traffic estimation on the road. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, if that came into the standard, and you could. Uh, rely on vehicles simply transmitting their current speed uh, 10 times per second or whatever. I'm just wondering if that would also help you in this sense here. Well, we are yet to take off, so 
speed is available to you both from GPS receiver could give you a velocity estimate, so 3D vector, but also speed from the speedometer and whatever. Um, is, all that stuff's available on the CAN bus. Right. And all the stuff that was already available on the CAN bus in a vehicle, we have not yet integrated into all this. Yeah. So things like, you know, indicator, turning, you know, how, how far your wheel turns, um, stuff like that can be used in the algorithm to help out where you are. But um, it's all a bit more heuristic once you start pulling in some of that stuff. Yeah. Is there no uh, noises uh, uh, will disturb your monitoring signal? Um, uh, you mentioned that you use uh, Gaussian denoising algorithm to uh, remove the noise. But there are many kinds of noise, uh, rhythm noise will, dis will um, affect your system uh, locally. How do you uh, deal with this problem? Are you, are you saying that there's a different type of noise on some of these measurements than the noise we've assumed? Yeah. The Which measurements are you referring to? Many kinds of noise, the, not just the, the Gaussian noise, right. and will yeah. disturb the monitoring signal. Yeah. Mm, for the non-Gaussian noise, yeah. and the the test field algorithm may be used a uh, uh, non-line uh, filter, such as the bus uh, filter, uh, H, H, H filter, and many, many other filters. Mm, but um, because um, our research focuses on the application uh, for the engineering, we, from the measurement, we can assume this measurement as a Gaussian distribution. Just to focus on the Gaussian noise? Yeah, just to focus. So, so your method is very robust to other noise from the experiment results, right? Because you, you said you just focus on the Gaussian? Nice. Yeah, we Why? focus on Gaussian because that's what we model based on what the sensor gave us. So yeah. we measure from a real sensor and the measurements, we characterize it based on the model. And the model tells us that it's Gaussian, not all the non-symmetric, but still Gaussian. Okay. So I don't think we have justification to consider, consider other models. And I, I'd like to add two things, like Gaussian and Gaussian noise uh, is you can use without losing image energy. And if you want to model it further properly, then you can uh, model the noise as exponential logarithmic noise. And that can be again further simplified to Gaussian noise with exponential. So that most of the time solves the problem and a common filter can handle that. So yeah, so for if you don't need really like in centimeter level uh, accuracy or millimeter level accuracy, then you don't need to care mm -hmm. about that. But other, other kinds of noise will also will affect the accuracy. Uh, those in general can be taken care of by Gaussian or exponentially correlated noise. So, yeah. otherwise, if you say that, like, um, you, you can say that there, there could be some spurious noise, spurious errors. Those are actually, we would separate them as not noise, but outliers. So, can you show me the accuracy for your method now? Is there For UW or DSRC? Sorry? For UW or DSRC measurement? Just show the last picture that's got both of them on there. Can I say there is a table that shows the accuracy just a note, right? Um, you compare to meters? I think the previous part. Yeah. 
that this means the accuracy is 2.62 meters. If you can get the data from the six set points. Yeah, well, okay. the, a common uh, with set, six set, and um, with both set lines. Okay. Okay, good. Thanks, man. Thank you.